the Texas Rangers are in the middle of a great second half run, and they now find themselves in first place in the AL West and are playing some great baseball, getting contributions from all over the diamond. The A's return home from a long 10-game road trip, but after a day off, Bob Melvin and the boys should be revitalized as they have a say in the division race. The Green and Gold have taken 10 out of 16 from their Texas rivals this season and will be looking for more. It's the final homestand of the year. A's Rangers next. stand of the year and it starts tonight here at the O.Co. Coliseum. The first place Rangers are in town and their hottest hitter right now is that man Shin Su Chu. So Sean Nolan the young left hander will try to slow down Chu and the first place Rangers. Rangers and A's. It's the first of three and it's coming up on CSN California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Sean Nolan making his fourth start for the Athletics. And Ray got his first major league win against these Rangers not long ago, so he's seen him for the second time. And one of the biggest things for him in that start down in Arlington was his curveball. As he would tell us, following the ball game, a better spin on his curveball. Gave up just one home run, and that was to Mike Napoli on the curveball. But after that, changed his speeds very effectively. He would end up giving up just the one run with striking out five. Got some bullpen help for some outs to pick up his first major Major League victory. So he mixed his pitches, and that is what you have to do against a very hot ball club. Now, Prince Fielder played in just 42 games last year. It was kind of a lost season for him, but he's making up for it this year. He's having a terrific season, and Ray, give him credit. He got hot in the biggest yes, series did. of the year for the Rangers, and he helped them sweep the Astros. And he also said, I don't mind DH because Moreland's a better first baseman than me, and so what does he do? He swings the bat. He did it with Milwaukee, straight away center field. The power that he has, look at the series he had against the Houston Astros, but the one thing that they wanted him to do was this, pull the ball to right field. They got him as a big power hitter to pull the ball. Of course, very inviting for left-handed hitters at the ballpark in Arlington, and he did that against the Houston Astros, but Kyle, like you said, the biggest series for the Rangers and it turned out big because it put them in first place and that's where they are right now but Prince Fielder is doing exactly what the Rangers had hoped they would, he would do. Indeed the Rangers with a one game lead over those Houston Astros for first place in the AL West. When we come back we'll have lineups and first pitch an important series for the Rangers. A's trying to play spoiler game one of three we'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back.
by Jack in the Box. Taste the new spicy nacho chicken sandwich munchie meal tonight, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Sean Nolan and the A's take the field in the all-whites tonight. Under the lights here at the Coliseum on a Tuesday night. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is open this week, and it's cool. And it's kind of overcast, and it's by the nice. end of the night, it's going to be a little bit chilly it's here. It's kind of nice, isn't it? It's been 85, 90. This is refreshing. But, yeah, it, it's got a chance to be a little bit cool by the time it's all over. Let's take a look at the lineup tonight for the first place Texas Rangers. Delano De Shields in center, Shinsu Chu in right, Adrian Beltre is at third, Prince Fielder the DH. Mike Napoli will again play left field, Mitch Moreland at first, Elvis Andrus is the shortstop, Roden Odor at second, and Chris Jimenez does the catching. Now, three years ago, the Rangers were in town needing one game. That was at the end of the season. They did not do that. The A's won the division. Of course, the A's trying to be the spoilers against the Rangers. The Astros playing the Angels down in Houston for Sean Nolan. His fourth start second against the Rangers. And as we mentioned, his first major league victory against the Texas Rangers in Arkansas. Spanish audio for tonight's game is available through your SAP button. It's presented by Jack Daniels. So Sean Nolan is ready, and so are we as Delano De Shield steps in, the Rangers center fielder. And the first pitch of the game is a strike. So 707 first pitch from the Coliseum. First pitch, 707. De Shields, Chu, Beltre. The Shields at 255 with a couple of home runs and 30 RBIs. Taking over that leadoff spot. And he's done a very nice job. He's in his rookie season. Umpires tonight. That's the crew chief Jerry Meals who's calling balls and strikes. Jordan Baker, Paul Emmel, and Andy Fletcher. Up high and now three and one to the shields. Sean Nolan has to utilize the change up the curveball fastball is not really overpowering and of course uh, needs to rely on the deception and spotting his pitches and it's pretty good about doing that. Little up little away and it's a leadoff walk to the speedy to shields. Ace defense. Smolinski, Burns, and Reddick in the outfield. Valencia, Simeon, Lori, and Canna are on the infield third and first. Carson Blair once again doing the catching. So here comes a red hot Shinsu Chu. Uh oh. Carson Blair put his hands up. Timeout was called, and that's all on the catcher, not necessarily the hitter. Robert Chu, I wouldn't ask for time either. Just no, he <laughs> wants to swing. That's right. <laughs> did it last Sunday against Felix DeBron. First inning, a solo home run center field. Got the Rangers on the board in that series finale. But I think Chu, the, the Rangers, and we talked about Prince Fielder, but Chu also the type of player that uh, the Rangers are very happy that he's healthy and playing well. But it can is going to have to hustle and he does and he tags Chu. So the out is recorded there with the shields going to second base. Pretty heads up play also by Brett Laurie the second baseman and he's telling Mark Cannon right now I'm I was at first. Watch more come in the top of your screen he was covering and that's very smart because there's no way Nolan was doing anything. And it was going to be can all the way. He did not know that Brett Laurie was there. And I think that's why the communication occurred after the fact, maybe to let him know in the future that he's there. But uh, good play by Mark Canna going after Chu. Chu decided to try to sacrifice a leadoff hitter to second. No Expo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. So one out, runner in scoring position for Beltre, who takes up and away.
How about that? Brand new Cash yeah. Creek Casino Resort side. High up above the Coliseum. We like it. Yes, I saw the big cranes out there last homestand. Looks good. Yeah. Take a tall crane for that. Yeah, there's nobody carrying that up those steps. <laughs> Joe probably could. Joe's strong. No, I don't think so. Maybe half of a letter. I'd get somebody else to do it. <laughs> That's why Joe did it. <laughs> so 2 0. Beltre at 276 with 15 home runs. 62 RBIs for Beltre, and he's been a hot hitter lately. Good off speed pitch, and Beltre really gearing up for something hard and went soft at Nolan. And and Beltre is not going to wait around. He knows that he's hot. He's RBI producer, also Prince Field in the on deck circle, left hander, but he's hot, so it doesn't matter whether he hits left or right. Shift is on for Beltre. See Lori playing behind second base. Beltre is one of those guys, too, Cap, as we've seen, would take advantage of that hole on the right side if you pitch him away. He would try to go that direction, especially with a runner in score position. And he lines one to right, as Ray predicted. The Shields being waved home. Throw to the plate late, and the Rangers lead one nothing. Ball pops away from Blair, and that allows Beltre to go to second. So a line drive to right field by Beltre for the RBI single. And I would think somebody's going to get an error because Beltre, even though the throw missed the cutoff, man. Change up, he stayed back and fooled on the previous change up, came back with another one and shot the ball to right field. And Reddick, of course, had to make sure he caught the ball first. It's going to be an error on Carson Blair. Is looked like he looked up to see if Beltre was going to be running or not, lost the concentration and dropped the ball. So here's Prince Fielder, and I agree with you, that is the right call. Error on the catcher. Well, he's been sent all the way, and Reddick a very strong arm, but the Shields able to score. So there's your leadoff walk, sacrifice the second, and Beltre gets him F. So Prince Fielder takes up and in, tries to check his swing, and he did. So 2-0 to the Rangers cleanup man and designated hitter. Co-player of the week in the American League. So he's hot as well. Everybody seems to be hot in this Rangers lineup. You know, Jose Abreu from the White Sox shared the award. And that one is driven toward left center. That's it while Smolinski back leaps up and makes the catch. So Beltre will get back to second on a very nice play by Smolinski. Well, you talk about a team getting hot at the right time. Yep. <laughs> that ball was smoked. By Prince Fielder, great job by Smolinski against his former team, going back, jumping up, and robbing Prince Fielder of extra bases. Excellent, excellent play by Mike Smolinski, and he was in the position to be the Rangers outfielder, but was let go. And he's fortunate to pick him up, put him in the lineup, and playing well. Strong man right there, Prince Fielder. So here's Napoli. Napoli coming over in a trade from the Red Sox. And almost makes you believe, Ray, that Napoli playing left field, which is a completely new position for him, that maybe that was part of the Rangers' plan when they traded for him. Say, hey, maybe we can get him to play left field. Yeah. And he's been out there a lot. Yeah, get his bat in the lineup. Yep. Moreland's going to play first. Of course, Prince is DHing, and not too many places to put him. And I don't know that he's going to catch anymore because the hip issue he had with the Red Sox. He had some big games and some big years with the Rangers before he ended up signing as a free agent. In seven of the last nine games, he has been in left field for the Rangers. It's the curveball. He threw it slowly, and Napoli has got it just over the left field. Your point, I think, was excellent. At Fenway, it's a base hit. He would not have gotten over the great monster, but in Arlington, it did. So 0 and 2 to Napoli. Combined numbers 17 home runs, 48 RBIs. 
with the Red Sox and the Rangers. It's that one foul to our right. Well, we showed in the, the highlight and Napoli hitting a home run on a curveball. In this event, he's not seen one. So things are remembered. Napoli is very strong. He waits well. Getting the curveball as he did in Arlington, not surprised that he hit it as well as he did. So a run in here in the first for the Rangers on Beltre's RBI single. to the leadoff man. Jeff Bannister all good in season number one. Got his team in position to go to the postseason. Rangers with a one game lead over the Astros in the West. Bounce to Valencia, backs up, backhands, throws in time, side retired. A run on a hit with a walk, and it's the Rangers one and the A's nothing after half an inning. As Burns, Cannell are in the top three spots, then Valencia, Butler, Reddick, who has had a huge season series against the Rangers, and then Smolinski, Simeon, and Blair. And the lefty, Martin Perez. A's are sent in for the first time this year, but they saw him a couple of times last year. Tommy John surgery, pretty much after the A's saw him last year. This season making just his 12th start. But last year, back to back starts against the Athletics, one in which he gave up nothing. Complete game. Three hit shutout, but the next start is not that good. He's ended up beating him that start, but uh, good left handed pitcher. And Jack, as you mentioned, we talked about in Texas how the number of injured pitchers coming back. Coming back. Darvish, and this is one of them. Martin Perez, Mike Maddox, their longtime pitching coach, and he's going to have an abundance of starters. It looks like if they're all healthy next year. First pitch to Burns. Bounced past Boland, who was playing in. And it's a base hit for Burns. Gosh, he swung at the first pitch. He did. And good to see the hamstring that kept him on the shelf for about a week is much better. Played in Houston, and here, first pitch fastball. And it said, I think I'll swing. And you move the corner infielders in, anticipating a bunt, which he does not bunt that much. And maybe they're in there just in case a ball is hit because it does not take a long time for him to get to first base. 51st first pitch hit. Only Carney had more back in 1988. So now Burns aboard as a base stealing threat as Canna steps in. No need. It shoots right past Jimenez. He can't find it and Burns to second.
So a quick runner in scoring position for the A's. Well, it just got by him and looked like it was crossed up, which would be surprising since there wasn't a runner in second. But Kevin has gone after it and turned his glove the proper way, but it was by him before he really could get the glove down. Did not know where the ball was. And that is scary when you know there's a fast runner moving to second base. And of course, if Billy had been running on the pitch and it got away from him, he would have moved on to third easily, but it's second base and Kevin could try to advance it. Is it wild pitch? I believe so, yeah. Yep, that's correct. 255 for Canna with 15 homers, 65 runs batted in. Canna shoots one foul right side. Looked like he was trying to go that way. So I got to Gordon Lakey in Houston, longtime scout with the Phillies, and but he made an interesting comment about he has never seen major leagues in which they've had four rule five players that have played so well and two of them are in the display tonight. One of them here Mark Canna the Shields the other center field and two very good players that have helped their ball clubs eventually this year as rookies. Inside corner strike one and two. Yeah both have a very fine seasons. Canna has 19 doubles. He's got a couple of triples to go along with his 15 home runs. Also stolen seven bases. Playing in his 114th game. For the A's, it's game number 151. 11 left after tonight. These are 64 and 86. Jared Parker, remember him? He's coming back. You're right. Good He's call. Coming back. And it's good to see him back when the A's are here. He's working out, working out, and Starting a throwing program, which is great. Tap toward Beltre. Beltre fires across to get Canna one out with Burns staying right at second base. Rangers defense, as we mentioned, Napoli in left field again, and then the Shields in the center, Chew and right. Beltre, Andrus, Odor, and Moreland. So very good infield with Chris Jimenez doing the catching. So one away for Lori. Two sixty eight for Lori with sixteen home runs and fifty eight RBIs. All the different numbers we throw at you and a. We've mentioned this before, Ray. For Brett Laurie, his favorite number may be games played. Absolutely. And this is number yeah. 139 for him. He has not been on the disabled list. He's had a few, few dings here and there, but every player does. Back stiffens up occasionally, but don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> but as he says, and Bob Miller's done a great job in his kind of maintenance. You know, day off when necessary, and but. I think you're exactly right. Games played for Brett Laurie, and you have him on the field. Numbers will be put up, especially now at second base where he's playing, playing well. So runner at second, try to keep him from getting to third. Chris Menez does a good job of blocking the ball. He's in the dirt, and the Rangers, some pretty good catchers, and Robinson Torinos, who did an excellent job for the Rangers last year against the Athletics. And Jimmy as a former athletic. So one and two the count. And a nasty pitch there. A downward movement and Laurie strikes out for the second out. So Burns still out there at second base. See, see the movement down and in, going to the back foot, kind of a cut slider and it's a great pitch. Long stride. Brett Lurie thought it was good enough to be a strike and had to swing and bottom dropped at him. Well, it's interesting. We look at that. It, it didn't look like a fastball. It, it was not a changeup. Could have been a slider, yeah, yeah. but 88 89, pretty hard slider. Well, and you look at two the, the 57 percent fastballs, many times you'll see two and four seam and a cutter, sure. which basically are all. Types of fastballs, and that's what gets the number up and the percentage so high. Bounced up the middle. Andrus with a diving play gets up, throws in time to get Valencia. 
And Alvis Andres saved a run for the Rangers with a very fine play. one nothing Texas after one. Silicon Valley's premier 24-7 entertainment destination. It's Portuguese night here at the O.Co. Coliseum. As it is the final homestand of the year. So we hope everybody's celebrating Portuguese night. having a good time. Another night game tomorrow, then a day game on Thursday against these Rangers. And then, of course, the Giants come in to finish out the home portion of the schedule. And you haven't heard announced today that the A's will start Barry Zito against the Giants on Saturday. So it will be the Hudson Zito matchup in game two of that series this weekend. And I know that's what a lot of people wanted. And yeah, we thought it was a good idea as well, but weren't sure it was going to happen, but it was announced today. And then on Sunday, the A's will honor the big three as Mark Mulder will be in town. And those three will throw out the ceremonial first pitches. So that'll be a fun weekend. It'll I think it's gonna be fun no matter what because of who you're playing, but uh, it's certainly gonna add something to the excitement. He's happy. <laughs> he could not have been. I mean, he pitched on Sunday in Houston. But fans, I mean, they have to be ecstatic to know that Barry Zito is back, first of all, but then also announced that he's gonna be pitching on Saturday against his good friend and former teammate, Tim Hudson. Lori backs up, Barron's quick throw, and it's not going to be in time as Moreland beats it out. Too deep. He runs too well, and you have to go that deep from the shift, and you could say it should have been a base hit anyway, and it was, but actually it would have been right at the second baseman playing in Roman's position, but playing deep, Moreland showing he has decent speed. Brett Lori had to go to his right, quick throw, one hop, and Lori not able to get it, but Morley can run. Oh, he just kind of jogging there. It wasn't even running yeah. hard. He said, I got this one. Had it all the way. So that's the second hit for the Rangers, and here's Elvis Andrus. But it should be fun. I mean, if you just kind of put it all together, you, you got geographical rivals playing against each other and but you have two pitchers that played for both teams that were very popular with both fan bases. Exactly. And I think the fans are very much going to enjoy it as well whether you're an Ace fan or a Giants fan. And you know they talk they, they always put the list together of players who have played for both Bay Area teams mm -hmm. and really on Saturday you have two pitchers one pitcher for the Giants who pitched for the A's and the other pitch for the Giants and now back with yeah. the A's so it's couldn't work out better and it's a great storyline and 
Happy the A's announced that today to give everybody a chance to enjoy. And for Barry Zito also as he is going on the side and trying to get as much work done as possible to build up the arm strength. But really looking forward to the start on Saturday. I just wonder on Sunday which uniform Mulder is going to wear. Mm. Decision time. Yeah. Give an A's jersey. A Mulder. I'm sorry if I said Hudson. Mulder. Hudson with the Giants. Zito with the A's. Mulder played for the Cardinals after uh, the A's. So. You know, and Kyle, I think from Mark Mulder's standpoint, if he had not torn his Achilles tendon last spring, he probably would have made the Angel staff. Because he was coming back after many years of not pitching and figured out something with his release point and was coming back and was actually, and I think it was the first day of workouts. Yeah. Similar to Scott Sizemore with the athletics when Josh Donaldson took over. Well, three and one to Elvis Andrus, and that one's in first strike. So full count. And you know, talking about that list of guys who have played with both teams, don't have the list in front of me, but you could probably make the argument that those are the two biggest names sure. on that list. Yeah. I mean, just look at the career wins. <laughs> Andrus has decent bat control. We'll see if Moreland. Think about taking off. Anders does not strike out a whole lot. Not running. The ball's bouncing in the hole. Simeon back ends. Throws the second for one on the first. And not in time. Throw a little wide. So Anders at first now with one about one out. Here's our Geico quote of the game. Barry Zito talking about his first outing with the Athletics since October of 2006. He pitched on Sunday. Nice. Houston. Just being in spring training with them was awesome. Obviously, you've been able to be with the team during the regular season is huge. It's a bonus for sure. I didn't expect it, and that's an understatement. And he's talking about just being called up. Yeah. And now he'll get a, a nice send off with a start on Saturday. Kind of bookends for the fans because they saw him at the end of spring training, the Bay Bridge series, and here he comes back in September to make the start again. Rogned Odor hits, having a good season 14 home runs, 55 RBIs. Inches off at first, and that's a strike. Going two. I do have Bray the list in front of me, though. A's and Giants played for both teams, and I don't want to say I jumped the gun, but there are some big names on there. Vita Blue is. Yeah, I knew Vita. He probably is going to call us after the game. That's fine. Vita can call. <laughs> I said maybe two of the biggest names. Yeah. No, you were right. And I think they are. They are very, very big. How about? Orlando Cepeda played just for a yeah. little while with the Not Willie the athletics Willie, Willie McCovey. McCovey. Yeah. All three of Lou brothers. How about that? All three yeah. of Lou brothers right. played with both teams. That's right. It's a good list. Now, Jesus was on the team that I was playing and. I always said he was the best. Never had a ball hit his back. They throw it at him, he drop his back. I mean, I can still see that he was outstanding. Popped up, shallow right. Reddick comes in. Reddick gets to it. So this was Barry Zito on Sunday. Just glad to be out there. How about getting his feet wet? He kind of said that on the plane as uh, we were leaving Houston. Rasmus. Curveball's left inside just over the fence in right field, but we are throwing him a curveball earlier. I think the previous pitch was outside, probably where he wanted to throw that one. But I mean, you can imagine a 14 year veteran takes a year off, spends a year in AAA in Nashville, talking about getting his feet wet and was happy just to get an, an outing in Houston. So, I mean, that's it's a very humble person and uh, 
understands the game is a humbling game and he appreciates it and they give him a lot of credit for doing what he did especially this past summer. So here is Chris Jimenez the ninth place hitter. Willie McGee is on that list. Yes. Kevin Mitchell. Joe Morgan. Hall of Famer. Yeah. Billy North. Played a couple years with the Giants. Dave Rigetti. You know what? I just go back to your original statement. Forget about that list. I'm intrigued Forget now. Mike Eldretti's yeah. on the list. Marco Scudero. Kiyashi Yabu. <laughs> nice. Dan Otero. But none of those guys are going to be pitching or playing on Saturday. It's going to be Tim Hudson and Barry Z. So your, your original statement was right on. Two of the best known. Will be on the mound side. That's who's right. Who's going to catch him on Sunday? Oh. Going to bring back uh, Ramon. <laughs> sure, <laughs> catch all three, one at a time. Two and one to Jimenez. A lot of pitches in the first two innings for Nolan. He's about to throw his 40th, and that missed, and now it's three and one. I think there's always a. Something to be said about starting against a team. You start against the White Sox and then start against the same team again. They remember. And, you know, sure the scatter reports and all the video and all that, but bottom line, you know, these guys are facing him and remembering what they did in Arlington and gave up just the one run, the home run in Apley. But they are waiting back a lot better, actually, in this game than they did in Arlington when he struck out five. He's yet to get his first strike out tonight. So full count. Anders will take off again. And there he goes, and it's a swing and a miss. That's the first strikeout for Nolan on the evening. And we are through an inning and a half here at the Coliseum. Butler's going to lead it off. Rangers leading one to nothing. Hey, fans.
home series of the 2015 season when the A's play host to their Crosby rivals. It'll be from Friday, September the 25th through the 27th Sunday. Come out and support the Green and Gold as the A's close out this year's home slate. Get your tickets now online at athletics.com slash tickets or by calling 510-638-GO-A's. And I would think that many, many people who at the beginning of the season when they saw the schedule come out and they saw A's and Giants, final three home games, they didn't know what to expect this weekend nope. when they bought those tickets then. Good sweaters there. That one driven to center. That's hit well. The shields going back, and he's going to have room. He's got it. Long out for Billy Butler. I have a feeling he hit that pretty <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, I think he will be in first to say, why didn't that go out? Batting in sixth position, right fielder, number 22. So here's Josh Reddick. Reddick. He's back. So is the music. <laughs> Reddick hitting 273 with 19 home runs and 74 RBI. So good season for Josh. Well, one home run would give him 20 and 75. And get to the, the 20 mark, which he'll do it without trying. And he's done a lot of damage against the Texas Rangers this year. He's 19 for 43 with three homers and 15 RBIs. That's a 442 average. So two and one the count. How about this in athletics history. Highest batting average versus the Rangers in a season by an A's player. Rennick is second, and he's very close to Jason Giambi. So all he needs is a decent series. And the 3 1 pitch is outside. And not surprised to see Stephen Vogt's name on there because early in the season, he did not play down in Arlington where the A's were just there for three games, but uh, the earlier series. Josh Reddick did great. Stephen Vogt did great. A couple guys hitting 440 on the season. That's pretty impressive. How about Stephen Vogt catching batting practice? Or actually, bullpen catching today. And we might see him this weekend. Sounds like it. Yeah. He wants to, and he just might. Tapped foul by Smolensky. Stephen Vogt is the A's nomination for the Roberto Clemente Award. And a nice pregame ceremony. Yeah. Wife Alyssa. Wife and children. Yeah, that's nice. Baby boy said, let me see, Daddy. Stephen Vogt <laughs> is one of 30 club nominees eligible to win the league. Come on, Dad. Let me hold it. <laughs> so one and one to Smolinski. Malinsky at 192 with six home runs and 23 RBIs. And he chased a pitch in the dirt. So the game that we're watching right now is the Astros and the Angels. And the Angels are leading four to two in the top of the eighth inning in Houston. Astros won last night, so the Angels trying to even up that series at a game apiece. And the Angels. That one is driven toward left center. Hit well. The Shields on the move, still on the move, and it's over his head. Up against the wall. He chases it down. Reddick rounds third. Reddick's going to come in to score. Smolinski with an RBI triple, and we're tied at one. Great, do you think that felt for Mr. Smolensky? A team that he played for last year hit his first home run against the Athletics and almost hit another one here. But you know, with the speed of the Shields in center field, he runs well, covers a lot of ground. That's how hard the ball was hit that the Shields could not get to it over his head and hit the top part of the wall. Josh Reddick, with only one out, had to make sure he didn't hesitate. But once he saw the ball drop at second base where he was, he took off and 
Not only did he score, but Smolinski got the third infield has to play in. And it's playing in for Simeon. Simeon takes just a little bit low. So another triple for the A's. They're 39th of the year, closing in on the Oakland record for triples in the season. 68. And how about that? First year in Oakland, 1968. In the first strike, one and one the count. Marcus Simeon has been in this position several times this year. It's a learning experience for him and put the ball in play hard someplace, try to get it through the infield of the outfield. Like that. And DeShields hustling back on this one, and that's over his head. Up against the 400 foot side. Simeon's going to round the bag at second. And how about triple number 40? And it's an RBI triple. Two to one A's lead. Tie record with one swing of the bat. How about that? He's getting better, and we're going to see a young man just continue. How about this stroke? Slider stayed out. He crushed it to center field. Great concentration, and not only did it hit over DeShields' head, but showed the blazing speed on his own heading to third base, and DeShields stayed in play, hit the grass softly, and then died at the center field wall. Marcus Simeon turning on the afterburners, and he could fly, and he showed it on this one. Once he got to second, He's on his own. For Simeon, that's that. triple number six. I was thinking, well, we got about Ready 11 games to tie the record. To tie to the next swing, next batter. So that is outstanding for Marcus Simeon. Just as big to get the third, but also to get the runner in from third with a booming triple to center field. So here's Carson Blair. Blair, the ninth place hitter. Pitch to Blair is outside infield stays in. This is the fourth consecutive game that Blair has started. Well, Simeon did a great job with the runner at third infield end. Blair's got to do the same thing. So now one and one on the swing through. One of the hardest things probably as long as the game of baseball has been played is to convince a hitter that with a runner third infield in less than two outs the pressures on the pitcher. pressures on the other guy <laughs> and, you know and hitters it's it's hard for hitters I don't care how long the game has been played it's just something that you feel you have to do it sometimes you just do things out of the ordinary and I think for Marcus Simeon with the number of opportunities he's had this year and yes he's failed and he knows it but to do it tonight. That's how far he has come this year and over the last couple of weeks of the season. Don't you think it tests a hitter's patience? That's and that's I, when that's I say patience, I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about laying off close pitches. You just got to be patient. Just okay. let it yeah. come to you. But I think you want to succeed and you want to succeed yeah. quickly. And, and it's almost like I have to do it. I got to get it done quickly. <laughs> because they expect me to get it done. And their percentages show. Getting a runner in from third less than two outs and what the percentage is. But bottom line, if you wait and you wait long enough, the infield, you don't have to, have to hit it that far or that hard to get the runner in. Simeons was exceptional, but bottom line, they're in and there's a lot of space between the infielders and the outfielders. And now three and two. It's a good pitch by Perez. He's keeping the ball down. Remember Blair in his first at bat in the big leagues, he walked. So he has shown the patience and even more so now with the runner at third. And that one just missed on a close pitch, first and third. And a second walk in the inning. They throw him the fastball and now the infield can play back, maybe. It is Billy Burns who did single, but we'll see what the infield will do. First and third, a tough man to double up unless the ball is hit hard right at somebody. 
Good at bat by Carson Blair. The foot runners at first and third. Burns bounced on past Moreland, the first baseman, for a base hit. Well, if he does something similar, he can take advantage of the hole between first and second. And he bunts back to Perez. Bare hands, throws home, and they got Simeon. What a play by Perez. Speaking of staying calm, that's yeah. exactly what he did, and he made a heck of a play. Well, the bunt closer to first base, the play is not able to be made by Perez, but considering where he punted it, the only play was going to be to that shove underneath, underhand. And Simeon was not a suicide. It was safety. The line was Simeon, and it was just a great play by Martin Perez. Fed it perfectly, gave the catcher Tim has a chance to catch the ball, then put the foot down, see him catch it, and then put the foot down to block Simeon and make the play. So two outs now with. Blair at second, Burns at first, and here's Mark Cannon. These have scored twice here in the second inning. Blocked by Jimenez. Cannon bounced out to third in the first inning. So the Angels leading the Astros four to two going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Angels just added a run to the top of the eighth. Can a base hit center field. Here comes Blair. Here comes the throw and it's going to go shortstop. And in the score is Blair and it's a two out RBI hit for Canna and a three to one A's lead. Talk about loading up and unloading. Mark Canna, watch him load up here and then unload, extend the arms right back up the middle. As hard as this ball was hit, getting a good jump off second is important because it was hit hard with two outs. Blair could do it. And the Shields, really not much of a chance, but Mark Canna drilled it to center field, almost stepped on his own back. Carson Blair able to come around and score without a throw. Watch this. Throws the bat and that. Uh, uh. Ow. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a while. No. I, I think maybe he's got to figure out a place to throw his bat when he's finished. So here's Laurie. So in this inning, two triples, a single, and two walks, and both the walks have scored. Yep. See that. The top this year for the A's twice five have scored, one time six. And when you have 30 pitchers warming, one can start warming up of the second inning. And here it goes. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> We've seen that young man before. It's Chichi Gonzalez. Yeah. Yeah, he started against the A's when the A's were just an artist. Started the Sunday game that. Hamels was backed up to pitch on Monday night against the Astros. Just a bit inside, two and one. Think about a lot of pitches. First inning, just 11 for Perez and a whole bunch in this half. And you're right about the couple of walks and good bats by Reddick, the lefty, to start it with one out. And then Blair on a 3 2 fastball. Fouled straight back two and two. Bad road numbers for Martin Perez. Six road starts. He already over five, and he has yet to win on the road. Overall three and five. He already four point nine six. Catcher and catcher will 
get together. 27 pitches this inning. So both starters have thrown a lot of pitches in the first two innings. Swing and a miss by Lori. Chased a pitch in the dirt. Side retired, but a good inning for the A's. They score three times. They get two triples in the inning. One by Smolinski, one by Simeon. Both of them not get one. So 3 1 A's after two. Triple in the bottom of the second. So the A's lead three to one over the Rangers. So Sean Nolan with a lead as he faces the top of the Rangers order. Delano DeShields walked and scored in the first inning. Way high and the changeup slips out of the hand. Of Nolan. Hop up. It'll be just behind the Rangers dugout. Think about Sean Nolan and his fastball change up differential. It's not the 10 to 12 that some pitchers like to have, but he does a good job with his delivery. Looks very good coming out of his hands and Five to six miles per hour difference is perfect for him. Did that in the start against Seattle and accomplished that basically in his previous starts and right over the top and he's a big man, but he's not one that throws 100 miles an hour. Which as long as you have the deception and control of your pitches, you don't have to. So full count, trying to keep the shields off the bases. Foul back. Ray, you mentioned Rule Five with Delano to Shields. He was with the Houston Astros. In fact, he was the eighth overall pick in the 2010 draft. Eighth pick in the draft. And he had some decent years in the minor leagues, but the Rangers grabbed him in the Rule Five, and it's turned out well. Yeah, as many as 83 stolen bases in the minor leagues. He did that in 2012 at Lexington. I've never got to the big leagues with the Astros. 
Drives this one toward Reddick, who backs up. He's there, one out. Time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag CSNCA Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. Oh, we've had a lot of fun with that this year. Seen some great photos. And we appreciate all the photos that have been sent in. Keep them coming. So here's Chu. Chu, who had a sacrifice in his first at bat. How hot is Chu? Well, I'm going to tell you. He's 12 for his last 19. Make that 12 for his last 18. Stretch that out a little further. He's 19 for his last 37. Remember, he got off to a slow start, yeah. but he's been terrific in the second half. Which makes you wonder why would he bunt? <laughs> Well, that was that's true. That's true. As he did hit, it's not like he hasn't hit lefties before. So he was hitting 221 at the All Star break. Since then, he's hitting 315, third best in the American League. So he's really, I mean, for the first time last year, he was banged up a lot. He's, he's playing the way the Rangers hoped he would when they signed him to that very long contract. And before coming to Texas, I mean, he really was a very, very good all around player. Injuries slowed him last year. Big second half this year. And he chased a high fastball up and in two outs. And this might be one of the reasons he sacrificed or tried to bunt for a base hit in his first at bat. Maybe he's not seeing the ball that well off the lefty Sean Nolan. He did against DuBrant last Sunday. And that was a week ago Sunday when the A's were in Arlington. It's he did well against the A's lefty that night or that afternoon. Beltre goes after the first pitch. Hits one to shallow right. Reddick in Lori out. It'll be Reddick. Three up, three down inning for Nolan. So he is settled in. We're going to the bottom of the third. It'll be Valencia, Butler, and Reddick. A's three, Rangers one. Out of market game live on more than 400 supported devices. Your time highlights, live look ins, Fritz tracking widgets, and more. Visit MLB.tv today. Cool night at the O.co Coliseum. And the A's leading three to one, bottom of the third inning. It'll be Valencia, Butler, and Reddick against Martin Perez. 
Had a tough second inning and the A's scored three times. Perez just 24 years old from Venezuela. Working back from Tommy John surgery. Last year he made eight starts. And then in May went on the DL. In the middle of May had Tommy John surgery. He's back out there. Two and two to Danny Valencia. One thing for sure, he wants to call his own game because he shakes a lot. And he did it with Brett Lorry. He ended up throwing a curveball in the dirt and got a strikeout to end last inning. Rolled foul. Well, Prez, Rangers like him enough that they actually gave him a very long term contract. Yes, they did. He signed a four year, $12.5 million deal going into the 2014 season. So that contract runs from 2014 through 2017. And then there's club options for 18, 19, and 20. So he has a chance to be with the Rangers for a long time. Another young man by the name of Neftali Feliz should have taken the same off. Yep. So Perez saw a chance to get a little security and he took it as he walks Valencia. Perez not happy with himself. And you know, Cat, there is nothing wrong with taking the security. Right, Especially your pitch, you end up with Tommy Johnson. And the thing, too, with a contract like his where. Four years, so you're guaranteed twelve and a half billion dollars. And then, if you are good, they're going to pick up the options. And in his case, the club options. There's three of them for three years, and those options are for bigger money. And at that point, if you're good, well, then you're you're going to get even more. So it, you know, it's it's called win-win. Yeah, it it's seems like it. Yeah. And for the Rangers, you know, listen, he missed. A lot of time because he had Tommy Johnson, right. but he's still a young guy, sure. and you still have him under control if you would like through yeah. 2020. Yeah. No, I, I agree, and I, I think pitchers are smart for doing that. Yep. And I think especially pitchers, all all players in general, but especially a pitcher because you never know what can happen. It, it happened in last year. They hit left field. Butler hits it hard. Jeff Bannister, I don't think, could wait until the no. ball landed before he's out of the top step and headed towards the mound. Yeah, Perez. Okay in the first inning, but. Oh, it's Mike Maddox. Sorry, I thought it was uh, Jeff Bannister, but. And he may get one more hitter. Yeah, Mike Maddox, my apologies. I just looked down and I saw the step and I saw the guys warming up the bullpen, but Billy Butler pulling the hands in, driving the ball to left field. And so. Mike Maddox, the veteran pitching coach, out to visit with his young pitcher. Well, you think about the first inning, the base hit the opposite field, Billy Burns, and then Canada Lori and Valencia, one, two, three, and things look good. His club got a run. But since then, he struggled. I think too, Kev. I've, I've known pitchers that work with catchers, and pitchers simply say to the catcher, you "Tell me what to throw and where to throw it." And you know, you you see a pitcher shaking a lot, and granted, he feels comfortable throwing certain pitches. But sometimes, if you muddle your mind, the catcher calls the pitch, then you say, "Well, I want to throw this." Then are you in between? Sure. Instead of sometimes just saying, "All right, call the game." You know the hitters. You know the scouting report. I'll just go with you. Here's the pitch to Reddick, and that's low. One and zero. Good opportunity here for the A's to add on to their three to one lead. And Reddick's a lefty. The pitcher's a lefty, and a righty's warming up in the bullpen with the righty and the on deck sir. <laughs> What's your point, Ray? <laughs> so I think Mike Maddox might have said exactly that. That one bounced to Odor. He's going to tag Butler. Throws to first. Boylan can't dig it out. Odor lost his balance a little bit and 
that forced him to throw low. So a little bit of a break for the A's is it looked like it was going to be a double play. It should have been. Tag him and throw it. Actually, he when Butler kind of went around him, it looked like he lunged at Butler there, and that's when he lost his balance. He got him, but lost his balance, then threw the ball in the dirt, and Morton couldn't come up with it. Maybe it's the earmuffs. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it was 61 at game time. I mean, well, maybe he's following his double play partner. I think that he's probably following his double play partner. <laughs> exactly. But I saw Elvis Andrews. I said, "What is? It? I mean, this is. It's cooler, but it's comfortable. It's not 95 and 100 like Arlington, Texas, but earmuffs." And here's Smolinski, and that first pitch is low. So first and third, one out. Back to back triples. Last time that happened was 1992. Ray, you were here. Willie Wilson and Mike Bordick. Tap toward Andrews. He's got to wait. Shuffles to Odor. Quickly to first. Not in time. Run comes in to score. That's Valencia. And it's 4 to 1. Nothing the Rangers could do. Just had a wait on it. It was the Reddick ball that's going to. Yeah. Have the Rangers scratching their head a little bit. Smolenski hit it best. He hit it off the plate, slowed it down. Elvis Andrews to Odor in, doing his best, going into second base. And Reddick did a good job to up in him a little bit. No chance to double up Smolenski. So a couple of RBIs for Smolenski tonight. And the A's have a four to one lead here in the bottom of the third. So one and zero to Simeon. So I got three walks, yep. all three scoring. That's exactly what happened to Martin Perez in the second start last year that he made after shutting out the A's. Ended up walking, went just four plus innings, four and two thirds, I think, and A's did beat him. Simeon's triple was to straightaway center field, right over to Shields' head. Fifty four pitches for Perez. And that slider in first strike. Angels four Astros three the Astros have scored a run in the bottom of the eighth. still batting in fact the Angels have brought their closer in. That's Houston Street so good ball game going on. At Minute Maid Park in Houston tonight. High tension. Really, the Angels can't afford to lose a whole lot more. And I'm sure both clubs inspired by the score here no at this question. early stage of the game. I mean, two hours ahead are those teams in Houston. 2 2 pitch Simeon swings and misses. Side retired. Another run for the A's, so we're through three at the Coliseum. It's the Athletics four and the Rangers one.
Domino's.com, now hiring baseball fans at jobs.dominos.com. A's four, Rangers one through three innings. So Sean Nolan will face fielder Napoli and Moreland here in the fourth. First pitch is a bit outside to Prince Fielder. Angels got out of that jam with the Astros just scoring one run. So they're on to the ninth inning. Angels with a four to three lead. Rangers with a one game lead over Houston, and they will play each other this weekend at Minute Maid. Should be a good scene down there. Exactly. That one's hit to left and hit well. Smolinski's back. He's at the wall and he's got just enough room. He reaches up to make the catch. Checking out the breaking ball. Breaking it down by his starts. He talked a lot about the difference between his breaking ball and his first start and how much better it has been. This is his fourth start now. And you dug up the terrific nugget about how the baseballs <laughs> are different in the minor leagues from a seams standpoint. It may have affected him a little bit. Well, he figured it out because as he told us in Arlington, the spin was better on his curveball. He was throwing a better curve. And we're not making any of that up. We, uh, the baseballs are yeah. different. The seams are not quite as high in the minor leagues. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, the one thing, and, and again, watching Colin McHugh pitch in Houston, I mean, they picked him up mm -hmm. because of the spin of his curveball. Because they, I guess they could revolution whatever in the spin rate and all that. And I mean, it's been a, it's been his signature pitch with the Astros last year and this year. And that's a fair ball. Wicked hop over Valencia and into the corner. Smolinski has trouble picking it up. Napoli will have a double. So not only was the ball hit extremely hard right on the line, but then it took a wicked hop right over the head of Valencia. Well, with Napoli, who is not really fleet of foot, and there's the bad hop right, over Valencia, but Smolinski Mitch. going into the corner yeah. to try to cut the ball off, and there's one you just play the the pinball the bumper pool off the wall because Napoli's not going to get more than two and you could turn it into maybe three but it's fortunate that he was able to at least knock it down the left field keep Napoli in second here's Moreland breaking ball stays inside to Moreland who had a base hit in the second inning Moreland, a very fine season, leading the Rangers in home runs with 22. And now 2 0. Oh. One of the best things might have happened for Moreland is moving to first base permanently instead of just DH. Credit Prince Fielder for that. And Prince has proven as a DH, he can swing the bat, stay healthy, and have some big hits as he did against the Astros, but Moreland has also had a very good year. Both left-handed hitters. Babe Moreland right. against the A's for sure. Laurie dives, cannot quite get it. Reddick gets to it, hits his cutoff man. As Napoli stops at third. So first and third one out and here come the Rangers a little bit off the end of the bat but perfectly in now between Reddick, first and second and Elvis Andrews nice effort by Laurie but it was going to be a base hit regardless. So here's the shortstop Andrews who had a fielder's choice in the second inning. Not great in these spots runner at third. Less than two outs, getting him in. And just hit one hard right at one of the A's infielders and get the double play. Takes a strike from Nolan. 
Odour is the on deck hitter. So a double and a single with one out here for Texas. Post pitch one and one. With 56 RBIs on the season. <laughs> Off the plate inside. Well, Sean Nolan with his good changeup. If he could get Elvis Andrus out in front and roll over on a changeup, and that was a pretty good time to throw one. Two and one count. Got to be looking fastball. That's where Nolan's changeup has been a good one for him. And there it was. And Anders chased it two and two. Pulled the string in the dirt. No chance to roll over and get a double play, but at least a good swing and miss pitch. So two and two. Not a lot of speed on the bases. Hit high and foul. Headed to the second level. And fastball in. Get it in there. Yeah. Misses down low. Three and two. So big pitch here. And Anders pops it up. That's not going to get it done as Simeon waits. And Simeon has it. Two outs. Well, I'm glad he came back with a little change up. And, and I, the one thing about fastballs inside, it's hard to get double play ground ball in there. If nothing else, make a mistake, you might end up hitting a ball down the left field line. But a change up three and two, even with Moreland running, a good pitch out of the strike zone, a little bit anxious was Elvis Andrews. Is. He's trying to look for the replay. He's not going to get it. Have to wait and. See it in the clubhouse. So that'll bring up Odor. Odor hit a fly ball in the right field in the second inning. And a first pitch strike by Nolan. So Napoli at third and Moreland at first. And now the count one and one. Outfield shifted just slightly toward left center field and shallow is Smolinski and left. Odor's got pretty good pop. He's not a big guy, but he has plenty of power. And not afraid to, to use it by swinging hard. <laughs> he does not get cheated much. He's got 21 doubles, seven triples, and 14 home runs. <laughs> Drive to center, but playable for Burns. And he's got it. So Nolan gets out of the jam. First and third one out. And the Rangers do not score. Bottom of the fourth coming up.
school of Mark Canna visiting the children from Parker Elementary School in Oakland, teaching them about the safe food handling. Visit was co-hosted by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Service and the California Department of Agriculture. Canna discussed the four steps to food safety. He talks about them often. Clean, separate, cook, and chill. Canna, self-proclaimed foodie, regularly posts photos and commentary from restaurants he visits in the Bay Area and on the road. Likes eating. Got that cake? I got it all. <laughs> Nicely done by you. With feeling. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's leading four to one. We would call us to go to Mark Cannon for <laughs> restaurant recommendations. Right. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, after oh. all, he grew up in the Bay Area and went yeah. to Cal, so he should know Bay Area restaurants right. better than anyone. Plus, he's a pretty good, pretty good athlete. He, he can play some baseball. And had a very good rookie season. Two and one to Blair, followed by Burns and then Canna in the bottom of the fourth inning. Blair walked and scored in the second inning. Breaks his bat, hits it toward Andrus. Andrus flips the first in time. And that's what's left. Not much. Send it up to Steve Vucinich and let him go to get an X-ray and see why it's breaking the way it did. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Not good at all. And it's unloading quickly. So now to the top of the order, Billy Burns. Breaking ball and Burns had a good swing, fouls it straight back. Burns has singled and reached on a fielder's choice, so he's been on base twice, getting his third at bat in four innings. Another broken bat, slowly hit. No doer has it. Quickly to first and the throw a little wide, but Moreland stayed with it. So more firewood. <laughs> this is again what the speed does. Really Burns hustling down the line, the throw into Burns. Nice play by Moreland and Justin. Oh, throw that should not have been that poorly. Uh, So two ground ball outs here in the fourth inning. And Canna will hit. Canna had the RBI single in the second inning, picking up his 66th RBI. Canna asked for time, and he gets it. Sort of. <laughs> he, was, half he was not going to leave the box just in case. Moreland in the coach's box. He's got it. That's a seven pitch inning for Martin Perez. So on to the fifth. A's four, Rangers one.
A's with a four to one lead over the first place Rangers. First pitch to Jim and is a fastball high from Nolan. Nolan got out of a first and third one out jam in the fourth inning. So weaved his way out of some trouble there. It's a final. The Angels held on to beat the Astros four to three. Santiago over the colors. Trout hit a home run his 40th of the year. Pujols hit a home run his 36th of the year. Gonzalez and Carter homered for the Astros. So that's a big win for the Angels. Yes, I mean, they had to get that one. They hung on and did. Well, you have two teams. Watching this one to see how the Rangers do. One trying to maintain the one run deficit. And so all the teams in that wild card list, their games are all finished. So the wild card is completely updated right there. So the Twins won their game. Twins beat the Indians three to one. So the Twins pick up a game on the Astros. The Angels pick up a game on the Astros. The Yankees won earlier six to four in Toronto. And then, of course, in the AL West, Rangers, Astros, Angels, nothing has been decided just yet. They will tune into this game. So Delano to Shields with Jimenez at first. Two walks, two strikeouts for Nolan. And now one and one the count. I think it's pretty rare that you have two competing teams in the division actually rooting for the same team here. The A's. It's true. Mm -hmm. the Angels and the Astros. And so this weekend. Which is still a little ways off, but as we said, the Rangers will be at the Astros and the Angels will be home hosting Seattle. Uh -oh. Bounced into right field, the base hit. Jimenez is going to try for third. Here comes Reddick's throw, and it is not in time. And going to second base is DeShield. So it's a single. DeShields goes to second on the throw. Jimenez wasn't really running hard around yeah. second base, and then he took off. Well, they hit and run, and excellent executed by the Shields. And with the right side opened up, Reddick going. And well, all the while, with you know, maybe that's why he held up, thought he's going to be hit by the baseball, but still, there's where he hesitated, barely hit the bag, then headed to third, almost like I'm supposed to get to third. It's a hit and run. And he almost got thrown out, but by. Delaying his exit, actually heading into third base, what it did basically it forced Reddick to throw to first, and because of that, the Shields able to get to second base, where now second and third. So nobody out, and now you face the heart of the now order: Chu, Beltre, and Fielder. Shin Su Chu. So Nolan again in a jam. So each team with five hits now. And Chu takes down and away. Chu has a sacrifice and a strikeout. And after that high fastball, one and one. Now try to minimize the damage. That's what Sean Nolan in this half inning. You have two runners in scoring position. Two trying to get a productive out. Oh, 
Center field, Burns hustling in, Burns dives and he caught it. Both runners tag up, so pretty good base running by the Rangers, but a terrific play by Burns. It'll be a sacrifice fly for Chu with Jimenez coming in to score, and now it's 4-2. to two. Well, you're right about the shields. That's the key because once Billy Burns left his feet and almost looked like the shields thought and knew it was going to be caught, that's why he went back to second and beat him to tag and get the third easily. Question really, Billy had to leave his feet. Because that ball looked like it's about waist high, chest high, and by leaving his feet, really allowed. Well, here we go. More action for Burns. He stays on his feet this time. The throw to the plate is late. The shield scores. So back to back sacrifice flies by the Rangers, and now it's four to three. So almost two identical balls yeah. hit right at Billy Burns. Now this time off speed again. Remember yeah, last at bat, Beltre got the change Fielder. up and hit the ball to right field. This time, line drive to center. Really no chance to get the shields. That's very good base running by the shields. So base is empty, two outs, and here's Prince Fielder. So walk, single. And back to back sacrifice flies. And a couple of runs for the Rangers here in the top of the fifth. There's a big shift for Prince, who has lined out to left and flied out to left. Hits this one toward the seats down the left field line. Fielder's been tough on the A's this year. 21 for 62 with one home run on the season. Remember and, early in the year, though, Ray, he was hitting a lot of balls to left field. Yeah. I mean, he does that anyways, but we thought maybe even more so. Right. Too much. Yeah. yeah. But those two that we showed that he hit against Houston pulled to right field. And that was not his left field swing. No, no. <laughs> he definitely lift off. And there's, a, there's a protecting left field swing. And it went into the seats hot. And let's hope everybody's okay. Well, just kind of protecting, and that literally took the ball out of the catcher's mitt. Yeah. And that's how late his swing was. Or maybe looking for something else. Got the fast ball and decided to protect. See, there's his breakdown. So he really spreads it around. Well, the scary thing is, big and strong as he is, one swing on a mistake, and that's how quickly the game could be tied. Bounced right up the middle. And that's Valencia who shifted over that way, and he takes care of it. Side retired, but a couple of runs for the Rangers. So Bono the fifth coming up for three A's.
100% Authentic Fan Friday of the year, and it's coming up against the Giants here at O.Co. Get a ticket in a value deck behind home plate. An Authentic A's grab bag at your card, any $6 food and drink voucher. It's all for one great price. Best deal in Bay Area baseball is CSN's Authentic Fan Friday. Now, again, that's an Authentic A's grab bag. Now, generally, a grab bag means that there's numerous goodies in there. And that I can tell you is what's going to happen on Friday. Numerous? Numerous goodies. More than three. <laughs> so the place will be jumping on Friday, yeah. as we like to say. A festive crowd with full of A's and Giants fans. And then Saturday, of course, the Hudson Zito matchup. And on Sunday, the final home game of the year. Yeah. And really, for the first time in three years, the A's actually know that a week from Sunday it's over. Yep. That's right. In the last three years of postseason, and you go to postseason and you're excited, but unless you win the World Series and you really get excited, it can abruptly end and you're disappointed. Richie Gonzalez up again. There's a base hit left center field. The Shields hustles over to cut it off. And Rory, hustling as always, puts on the brakes. That's what you like to see. Strike out a couple of times. Get a slider, curveball, and then rip one in the left center. Three and one. Count, take advantage of it. The Shields a good job getting over to the ball and Keeping Lord at first base, and he's always thinking two, and then go for it, and then put on the brakes. It's hard to do for the big man to put on the brakes, but he does it. Did it nicely. So here's Valencia, as the leadoff man is aboard. Valencia has grounded out and he has walked and scored. And now Jeff Banister is coming out. He has not made the look to the dugout. He's not in a real big hurry to get to the mound, so he may be giving his pitcher a little extra time. Or maybe he hasn't made up his mind. How are you doing, Martin? You know, I had somebody up in the second inning. And here it is, the fifth. I think I'm going to leave you out. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> now, I bet that I bet that was a lovely conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and repair experts. <laughs> In 2013, the A's clinched their 16th division crowd in their 25th postseason appearance when 
Texas lost four to nothing at Kansas City a little earlier. It was really in the middle of the A's game, and then they saw the score go up. A's finished it off, and again that was 2013, which sort of gets back to your point, Ray. Where this year the A's know that. We will leave Seattle yep. and it will be over, yep. but check what the A's have done since 2000. And they've had some terrific seasons. But 2012 was such a crazy final three oh, games. That was so much fun. And then 2013, the A's actually clinched early. Yeah. Remember, we got in a, a plane after yeah. the celebration. And then last year, final day. Yeah, in Texas. Right, we yeah. waited it out in Texas. So every clinch is different, and that's what makes it kind of fun. Remember, in 2012, we celebrated twice, twice, <laughs> Monday twice and Wednesday, in three days, right? Monday yeah. and Wednesday. And I think the funny thing about that, Rangers needed one win. If the Rangers had won Monday night, and the Angels lost, which they did, the A's and the Rangers could have celebrated because Monday night the A's celebrated the wild card. And that was a guarantee. Then, of course, the Rangers never did win in that weekend series or that three game series, which finished on a Wednesday and lost the wild card game. That's right. They ended up yeah. winning 93 games and they hosted the wild card game, but it just seemed like yeah, after what had happened right. here, they just could not bounce back from that. Two and one to Valencia. You can imagine needing one win for division win, which is guaranteed five game series. And you end up losing and have to play one game that you're not really prepared for. That's a good call. And it's uh, it, it just didn't work out for them. And so Rangers were just one out a couple of times from being world champions. It was against the Cardinals did not happen. Chichi Gonzalez, the new pitcher, coming out of the bullpen. He's in, seen him as a starter a couple of times. As recent as a week ago, Sunday in Arlington. He made the start, ended up pitching extremely well against the Athletics. Rangers beating the A's two out of three as they prepared for the steers against the Astros. Beltre. Can't make the play and it rolls in the shallow left center field. Lori thought about trying for third, but he's going to stay at second. So Valencia is a viewer. We'll see what the ruling is. Beltre doesn't miss too much over there, but he did not come up with that one clean. Well, and it is surprising. This could have been a double play, and Short Hop did not get it. And really the key for the Rangers, they caught a break because Brett Loy slid in the second. If he does not slide, he goes to third easily as the ball got by Elvis Andrus. But after the slide, he started to go, decided against it. But man, it's just one of those that you did not expect Elvis or uh, Peter Beltre to miss the ball. Still have not got a ruling on that. Should be a base hit. I mean, it's it's a tough play, and I don't know. <laughs> See, he's so good they expect him to make those plays. So E5. That's a tough air. Tough air and tough for Valencia not getting a hit. And you know, Beltre was trying to go for two. That's why he tried to get the short hop. If he'd stayed laid back, he could have got an easy hop and gotten the force out, but he's penalized for trying to get a double play. So here's Butler. That one almost hit Butler. So each team with an air now, and surprisingly. These two teams have the most airs in the American League. Oh, that hit is uniform. Check it. Blouse it more, man. <laughs> Pull that shirt tail out a little bit more. One oh pitch on the ground to short. Out at second. Double play. So six four three on the double play and uh, there are two outs with Laurie at third. See if he blasts his uniform it's basically. <laughs> right 
So here's Reddick looking for a two out hit. <laughs> Catchers are doing it now. Yes, that's the thing to do. Got to take your glove off. Your catcher's been off that. Have to do it with the left hand. Yeah. You right. can't cross over the right to the right shoulder. No. The yeah, right hand. It's got to be left to right. Throwing same. shoulders. Yeah, same well. side. Yeah. Reddick swings and misses. So 0 and 1 to Reddick, who has walked, reached down a fielder's choice, and scored a run. Now Mark Cannon with the big two out RBI single in the second. A's trying to do it again. And for Reddick to do it. So now it's 0 2, so Josh will have to battle back. Flair left field but hustling in is Napoli and he dropped it and a run scores and Reddick's going to end up at second. So Napoli just overran it just a little bit and it looked like he had to reach back to catch it but somehow he just missed it. And in 2012. Josh Hamilton dropped one of the biggest, most important five balls in center field. This is an out. And he just reached up and missed it and then lost his traction. Right there, had it in the glove. Looked like it went through the webbing of the glove. See if it goes through the webbing. Check this out, Kite. It's in the glove. Now it hit the top of the glove. It just came yeah. out. It's, it it kind of smashed yeah. the webbing yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. It gave the illusion like it was going through the webbing, but. You know what happens on a ball like that if you're not accustomed to playing the outfield? Your head sure. bounces Bouncing and around. the ball is bouncing and you go up and that's the hardest play if you're unaccustomed to being out there with the ball yeah. coming at you. And he's a catcher, first baseman, and that's a gift. So two errors in this inning. Well, that's why. And both have been extremely yeah. costly. And we have not put the airs up on the scoreboard yet. <laughs> but they're two big ones. You know, we, we talk about the importance of, of an infielder, an outfielder, especially the foul territory here for the corner infielders, outfielders, to get the ball as quickly as you can to get under it. Sure. So you're not running and, and your head bouncing. I mean, you know, it's it's okay for outfielders because they're accustomed to it, but Okay, so Mike Napoli, I think to your point earlier about coming over from the Red Sox to move to left field. It's not that easy. No. I know I hated it. <laughs> I tried it and it just didn't work. Yeah. It's, you'd rather take a beating behind the plate than to get someplace where you're unfamiliar and, and try to do something. So one and two to Smolinski, who has a couple of RBIs. Runner goes, and the ball's popped up. Andrus, foul territory. He gets under it, stops, makes the catch, side retired. So the A's get an unearned run. A couple of errors in the inning by the Rangers. So A's five, Rangers three after five.
home game this season, you can purchase MLB authenticated memorabilia behind Section 120. Items include game used or signed baseballs, jerseys, bats, bases, and more. You can also shop online at athletics.com slash game used. Portions of the proceeds benefit the Oakland A's Community Fund. And if you want to see some stuff, just ask to see Eric Farrell's office. He's got all that stuff. He gets it authenticated. Big Dom down there normally. Did Dominic make it back from Arlington? You know, I'm not sure Dom <laughs> made it back from the last A's road trip. He's having a good time. He's still at the Cowboys game. That's which right. Just a week and a half ago. <laughs> That's right. Dom, you got to go. We could go Sunday. That's right. And when you make those good plays, you always want to lead off. And that's. Broken back. Tough play. Laurie hustling over, and he cannot pick it up. Obviously, there was a huge shift on. Laurie was on the left side of second base, so he had to come charging all the way over, and there just was not a whole lot you can do. He ran so hard, they're going to take him out for a pinch runner. Check this out. This is his biggest swing. You see where the bat went to the left, the ball to the right. Brett Laurie, uh, Napoli hustling. Watch the head of the bat. There it goes. And the ball with Napoli down to one knee did not make it to the outfield grass. And here goes the bat. Get it, Scotty. Exmo brought to him. <laughs> That's pretty good with that bat going on Exmo down the left field line. Wow. So Will Venable comes in to pinch run for Napoli. So Napoli's out. And Pomeranz is up throwing. So Mitch Moreland steps in. He is two for two. So seven hits. Make it six hits now for the Rangers. A's have seven. Rangers at this point in the season, independent rates, you know they're just going to keep coming. Keep sure. coming back. Yep. Overall on the year, the Rangers are make it fifth in the league. In total run scored, they're seventh in home runs and third in stolen bases. And they've been a much better offensive team in the second half. They started scoring the runs in bunches in July and have just kept going. Maybe why Jeff Bannister went out and talked to Martin Perez saying just made it a one run game. You go fall behind three and one, give up a base hit. Of course, Elfman came out of the game at that point. And that was his unearned run that came in to score. Close pitch inside, and it's two and one. Nolan has had one three up, three down inning. That was the third. A couple of base runners in the first, one in the second, two in the fourth, a couple more in the fifth, and a leadoff single here in the sixth. And that one's driven to center. It's hit pretty well. Burns is going back. Burns is at the wall, and it's gone. And we are tied 5-5. Moreland has hurt the A's again. Just a high drive that just kept going. So Moreland's fourth home run against the A's this year. We've seen some balls hit hard to the running track of the walls in their caught, but then this is the, the strength, the power that Moreland has that he can go after a high fastball and hit it to straightaway center. And this we are tied on a ball that did not make it to the grass that started the inning on a broken bat by Napoli and then a two run home run and tie game. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change, tune up, and repair experts. Number 13, Drew
dates for games at Cahokia Park have been announced. Enjoy a first-class experience, get an early glimpse of next year's squad. The A's all-new spring training venue in Mesa, Arizona. For more information, visit athletics.com slash spring today. So the Rangers have tied it. As Moreland with a two-run homer, his 23rd of the year, he now has 81 RBI. So, top six, five-five, and the new pitcher for the A's is Drew Pomeranz. So Pomeranz will face Andrus, Odor, and Jimenez. Nobody out in the first pitch. Rip foul. Most home runs versus the A's since 2010. We're not surprised that Moreland is on there, and we're not surprised that Beltre's. Moreland's been tough. Beltre with three against the A's this year. Moreland with four. And Beltre two is it two cycles this year? Two cycles. Yeah. So Pomeranz working strictly out of the bullpen now, five and five, three point five two. And nine starts on the year. Good curve for strike one and two. Boy. Sean Nolan, a couple of walks, both scored in one last inning, one leading off the game. Was the big two run home run. So the count stays one and two. So five runs allowed in five plus innings for Nolan. And he really was in trouble most of the night. A couple of walks, a couple of strikeouts. So the ace. Had a four to one lead after three. Four to one lead after four. Curve again. This one rolled foul. He just left Houston and saw a team that could hit some home runs in. Facing the Rangers, they can hit some as well. And it's amazing how just swinging the bat one time you can get a club back in the ball game, and they took advantage with a couple of sack flies last inning. This inning, a two-run shot, so in a matter of one plus innings. Four runs. Another hard hit ball, more action, no problem. Scotty can take it. Scotty got ten days off and. Right back at the swing of things. Come on, Scott. It's not that cold. Man, maybe you see Elvis Andrews and Odor. Maybe it's colder down on the field than we think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know that. I don't think so. I no. Agree with it, but maybe we're missing something. <laughs> it's a good battle here, Pomeranz in. <laughs> See, well, right? you know what? Maybe it is. Pomeranz knocks it down. It rolls toward the catcher, Blair, who throws, not in time. Came back toward home plate. So close play at first. He's taking a look at it. But from a catcher standpoint, not quite the kind of play you draw up where. You have the ball hit off the pitcher. They're going to check on Pomerantz. Then the ball comes back to the catcher. Blair throws at a bang bang play at first. And I think the more concern now about where did it hit Pomerantz. Blair band, uh, bear handing it quickly throwing. Sanders though smelling the hit and got it. Looked like that was good stretch by Canna, but not enough time to get Elvis Sanders. Checking the left foot or left ankle shin area, Pomeranz. 
So three straight hits. So Pomeranz tells everybody he's okay. And now he'll face Rodent Odor. Everything's final in the American League. Of course, the game we watch closely, the Angels four, the Astros three. So that series tied at a game apiece. Still nobody out here in the sixth inning. Plenty of base dealers on the team for Texas. Andrus has 21 steals. The Shields has 23. Bunts, it's a good one. Can it? Drops it. Throws? No. Holds on to it and everybody's safe. Perfectly placed bunt by Odor, and he's really running out of the box, Ray, and that helps yeah. him a lot. Well, right, Canna came in and charged it nicely, going over to cover first base or started to was Lori. He was there, but Canna could not come up with it and kind of looked up. And how many times we continue to say you watch the ball on the glove, you start to and watch Canna look up to see what the ball is going to do at second base. So the ruling is a sacrifice in an E3. So know it that, but the air allowing the runner to go to second, I guess, or the runner reaching first, probably for Odor. So there you go. Sack yeah. E3. And now uh, Jimenez shows butt and pitches high. So each team has made Two errors tonight, and I mentioned earlier, Ray. These are the two teams that have made the most errors in the American League. The A's have now made 113. The Rangers have made 110. And Jimenez will, if he tries to bunt again, Coulomb starts to throw. Valencia and Canna think he'll try to bunt again. Squares and he bunts it foul. So good spot for the Rangers where you try to bunt your ninth place hitter and Get things ready for the top of your order. Well, looks like with the lefty Nolan started. Pomerantz now home in the bullpen. He's want to stay with lefties against the, the Rangers, at least at this point. Valencia has it. Valencia will have his only play, he'll go to first base. So that's another sacrifice. Nice textbook too. First and second, and I don't know what the conversation was with Jimenez and the third base coach, but bottom line, bought at the third, make Valencia field the ball, which he did. Number seven, Lino DeShields. So second and third, one out, and now the A's will bring their infield in as it will be Delano DeShields. Rangers a chance to take the lead. They tied it with the Moreland home run earlier this inning. You got a couple of sacrifice flies in the game, both coming in the fifth inning. Doesn't happen very often where you get two sacrifice flies in one inning, let alone right after each other. That's a great point because that is rare. 
But that's great bus running by the shields to get to third yeah. base on a fly ball to center field. Thing about Pomerantz, he can get a strikeout. Each one here. Hit high in the air foul toward the Rangers bullpen. She was looking curveball and swinging at the fastball. Pomerantz, when he throws the fastball in and up, tough pitch for a hitter. Sometimes when the pitch stays a little bit up and away, it works out well for him also. But ideally, up and in. Especially 0 and 2. Chu is the on deck hitter for Texas. Alvarez joins Cologne. Missed outside, so one and two. The ball missed the left field too. Yeah, first, we got a first offering. That Alvarez's toss headed out to the wall, but he's all right. About the same time, there's almost a wild pitch to the plate. But handled nicely by. Carson Blair. Andrus and Odour are your runners. Drive toward Burns. Burns into right center. He's got it. Andrus tags. He's going to come in to score. Odour goes to third, and the Rangers have taken the lead at six to five. Another sacrifice fly. That's their third in the game. Get him over, get him in, and the shields. This pitch was supposed to be up. Left it out. Level the plate, not quite in enough where I wanted it, and deep enough. The door attacking, going to third. He got there easily. So now Chu steps in. Infield can settle back with two outs. Go, go, go. Block with the block with the Blair. Is that what I was going to say? <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> late in the year. Blair with the block. Well, that's why Odor getting the third made that a good block because he is at third base trying to prevent him from scoring. Chew a sacrifice, a strikeout, and a sacrifice fly. And Odour's the kind of base runner. He's down at third. He'll he'll be jumping around and he will do his best to yeah. try to distract the pitcher. Valencia well off the line, so he can dance around down there. And lefty with his back to the runner third. Yeah, you can't really tell where he is, especially with Valencia off the line as much as he is. And a high fastball, Chu chases it. He did that in the third inning as well when he struck out. Chu's gone away from that double ear flat. That's right. Yeah. Used to be the. That's right. Even though he's not a switch hitter. Yeah, but he always was. So one and two. Close pitch, but a bit outside. Now this is the fifth hitter that Pomerantz has faced. He's given up a single. There was an air. There was a sacrifice, and there was a sacrifice fly. With a good take. Beltre would be next. It's 
against the Rangers that uh, Carson Blade uses mass though he now is getting rid of it quickly which is a good idea. Nice block. Keeping the runner at third. Center field burns in and burns grabs it side retired so hard hit ball for an out Rangers scored three times bottom of the six coming up it's now the Rangers six in the A's five. against his former team a triple over the Shields head on the score Reddick and then that quickly how about the 40th triple for the A's this season time A's record back in 1968 and the score Smolenski the triple by Marcus Simeon but then the big man it's more of a two run shot to center field and that would tie it sack fly by the Shields who gives the Rangers the lead six to five as you go to the bottom of the sixth inning, you can find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing the world. Bill Moreland with the big home run. So 6-5, Texas. Chichi Gonzalez is back out there. Martin Perez went four-plus innings. In the air to center. Hit well, but just enough room for the shields, and he's in front of the wall, and he makes the catch. So one away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Will Venable stays in the game after pinch running. So Venable Napoli had a couple of hits across the air in left field, and it just worked out for the Rangers that as Venable pinch ran they ended up in that inning taking the lead and Venable's a very very good defensive outfield. So with one away here's Carson Blair and I heard some things earlier today Ray about Josh Fegley and yeah. it doesn't look like he's going to play the rest of the no, year. No probably not that's what uh, the concussion symptom. It's unfortunate because he was having a great season and will go down still as a very good season for Josh Fegley, although messing with the concussions in the head, it's hard to come back, and especially to catch a position. We just hope everything's okay for him or in the offseason and into spring training. And Brian Anderson joined the ball club on Sunday. Stephen Vogt was warming up pitchers in the bullpen, so we may see him before long, which yeah, initially I thought no, but it looks like more and more that he may do it. It's it's probably up to him and knowing him, he wants to come back and catch. Another deep drive for DeShields, but he's gonna get back. Well, I think in all sports now, concussions and the awareness is much more heightened, but it seems some this year there's been some strange things with concussions with other teams. The Giants have had a couple players that 
were cleared to play and played for a couple weeks and just just didn't feel right. Yeah. And I know there's been guys who I should have missed half a year. Justin Moore. No, Justin Moore, that's that's a longer four, than yeah. that. It was a full year for him. Half one into the next half, uh, half of the next season. So it, it, it's a bit of a scary deal. Did you ever have a concussion when you played? Huh? <laughs> We didn't know. That's what I talked you to you. You may have, oh, of right? Of course. I mean, I'm sure you get hit the head enough times, it's usually going to result in a concussion. But no, they, they are paying more, a lot closer attention, and, and rightfully so. You know, I'm sure he doesn't want to think about it. Mike Matheny probably had to retire prematurely. Yep. Hey, and did they get him? They did. Nice play by the shortstop. Yeah, Bob Melvin may take a look at that and he see because. You know, Billy didn't jump at the at the bag on that one. He ran through the bag. And I guess everybody thinks he's out because everybody's leaving the field. Yeah. And, and he was yes, yeah, on a close play. So that's a three up, three down inning for Gigi Gonzalez. Seventh inning coming up, six five Texas. Date in 1989. Dave Stewart pitched seven innings in an A's 5 and 2 in at Minnesota. And it was his 20th win of the season. That was the third consecutive year he won 20. It was also the 100th win of his career. And of course, he went on to win 20 games in four consecutive seasons. Terrific se career. 16 big league seasons and 168 career wins. 55. Game. One of the many stars of the 1989 World Series team. And you could see a picture there in Dave Stewart that he excelled when he got to the A's. Everything just turned around. Dave Duncan, the pitching coach, and Tony Russo naming him the first starter for Tony in his Oakland debut. Tony's as well as Stu. He got the job done in Boston against Clemens, and it continued throughout the career of Dave Stewart, which was outstanding. Daniel Colon comes in. Facing Beltre Fielder and Venable. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up. It's your oil change, tune up, and repair experts. Numbers with the Dodgers and the A's, eight appearances, no record. 11 and two thirds innings. So the A's. Taking a look at Daniel Colomb, see if he could be part of their plan for next year. Never anything wrong with taking a look at a, le a lefty reliever. No. Especially when you get somebody who can swing as hard as Adrian Beltre just did. Yes. Check this way. And some would say maybe that's a setup for looking for a similar pitch. Do some damage. He will set up pitchers. At least try to sometimes. And he 
took another big rip. This was an overhand curve, and Beltre strikes out. One away here in the top of the seventh inning. Big swing on a fastball, came back with a good curveball. Now batting, number 84, Prince Fielder. So that'll bring up Prince Fielder. Oh, for three tonight for Prince Fielder. Astros went into Arlington last week. Prince Fielder just did major damage. I give the guy credit for picking the biggest series of the year and just going off. Now watching Cologne pitch, uh, he's not the full on out. Like Kershaw, but he's got a little bit of that. A little bit of a sits up there for just a split second, yeah, and then drops everything down. Kershaw brings the hands up high, but watch this right there, just kind of drop. Does a pretty good job, especially against lefties. Smolinski has it. So two odds here in the seventh inning. In-depth Raiders coverage every single night and the home of the official post-game show of the team. Sunday to Sunday, the home of authentic Raider fans is CSN. So the Raiders with two home games. Start the season. And they'll head out on the road this week. We'll be at Cleveland on Sunday. Here's Will Venable. So as usual, a lot of work was done to get the field ready for baseball. And a great job as always. Never easy. Simeon has it. And Colom has a nine pitch three up three down inning. So nice job by the lefty. And we have reached the seventh inning stretch from the Coliseum 6-5 Rangers. Athletics trailing six to five. Six, eight, and two for Texas. Five, six, and two for the A's. And when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up. It's your oil change tune up and repair experts as Keone Kellogg comes in, rookie season. And he's pitched a lot of baseball for Texas. 65th appearance. He's won seven games. Pretty good ERA of 2.53. So Kella facing Canna, Lori, and Valencia here in the seventh. A 
And that's one of his signature pitches there. The good curveball. He's got a good fastball. And been given some uh, heavy responsibilities for the Rangers. Jake Diekman getting loose as well. This is called the back end of the, the good part of the back end of yep. the bullpen. Good pitch there. Canna takes it first strike. Canna ground out, RBI single, and a foul out. Rangers have a chance to pick up a game on the second place Astros, who lost at home to the Angels. Three consecutive curveballs. Those are clear glasses that Adrian Beltre will wear while he's hitting, but doesn't need them actually more windshield than anything. Breeze a little bit blowing tonight. He's not wearing ear muffs, so things are all good for him. No, he's okay. Andrus quickly ranging to his left and makes a nice play. And that play was all about the first step. Yeah. And he's got a pretty good one. Now batting second baseman, number 15. Well, to his left, this is supposed to be a high fastball. It ended up being a fastball down the middle and the 360. By making the 360 turn once he caught the ball, able to get a good enough grip to make the strong throw. Took a little bit extra time, had the time to do it. So Lori will hit. Lori, a couple of strikeouts and then a single and a run score. Yankees beat the Blue Jays six to four in ten innings. A much needed win for the Yankees as Ryan Dole starts to throw. So that game or that series tied at a game apiece. Big showdown for the AL East. In there, first strike. So the Yankees are now just two and a half back of the Blue Jays after that New York win in the East. Yankees had a three to two lead going to the bottom of the ninth. The honor of our had a home run to tie it. And then they went into extra innings. And Rick Bird, the young first baseman, hit a three run homer. So he's had some big hits for them in place of Mark Teixeira. One of the untouchables, and he's proven to be pretty good getting the opportunity, especially with Mark Teixeira out. No more text messages from nope. Mark Teixeira. One two pitch driven to right. The chew is there, and that's the second out. Edwin Encarnacion homered for the Blue Jays, his 35th of the year. Carlos Beltran homered for the Yankees, his 17th of the year. Career home run number 390 for Beltran. Twins beat the Indians 3 to 1, so the Twins staying alive in the wild card race. Santana beat Salazar. That game in Minnesota. Valencia takes a strike. In the National League, Jake Arietta became Major League's first 20 game winner tonight. What a a complete season. game three hitter with 11 strikeouts. Amazing season. Cubs beat the Brewers 4 0. Cubs closing in on. Postseason Burt Arietta is now 20 and 6 with a 1.88 ERA. And he's got two more starts and sets up on. perfectly to probably pitch the, the play in card. game. Yeah. yeah. So we have a 20 game winner. Yes, we do. And he doesn't have to really pitch a lot <laughs> to, to get to the 20 wins because he's already there. But and I think uh, even what Lester said, he should be pitching the, the play yeah. game. So still like to try to win the division, but the Cardinals going to be tough for them. Although Yadier Molina, that's a blow to them. With that's what? not good. Yeah. What, Even if he misses a week, well, there's yeah. only two weeks left in the season. Well, Keiko's got 18. Felix Hernandez has 18. 
Baumgartner has 18 and Greinke has 18. So those guys will get a shot to win 20. A little bit outside three and one. Last year there was three 20 game winners Kershaw. Cueto and Wainwright. I forgot about Wainwright who's right. trying to come back for the postseason as well. Might not be a bad reliever to come back. Which uh, it's possible. And a little bit low and it's a two out walk for Valencia. So he's walked a couple times tonight. So Butler will hit. Butler. One for three against Keone Kella. Kella right over top. That's what makes this curveball so good. And he's missing now with a fastball after throwing very good curveballs to start the inning to camp. Outfield playing deep as they slide back a little bit. Trying to cut off a double. A little bit outside, not by much. Kella took an extra long look into Jerry Mills. Just wanted to find out why it was called a ball. Duo delivery, and that one is in first try. So now Ollendorf is up, joining Deepman. So he's getting ready for Smolensky if the inning continues. After Deepman faces Reddick and gives up a bullet. You're you're <laughs> acting Ray like each team has numerous <laughs> pitching options. Well, Deepman will start the next half, and they do have numerous. So a two out walk to Valencia nothing else for the A's and we are moving to the eighth inning 6 5 Ranger. Photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to CSNCA Data Strong, and you can see yourself in the upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. 
Tonight's fan photos from Samantha Kepler. And we love those t-shirts with the white spikes on. Love those t-shirts. Charlie on the mule and the white cleats got it all. Man. That's what I'm saying. So Cologne stays in the game to face the left handed hitting Moreland. Followed by Andrus and Odor. Top of the eighth inning and the Rangers leading six to five. There's the outfield. In the dirt and Canada takes it out. So one away here in the eighth inning. Rangers made an announcement earlier today, Ray, that Cole Hamels, who was scheduled to pitch Friday, and remember now the the Rangers will play the Astros Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But they have decided to pitch Hamels here on Thursday and the reason it was done is it lines him up to make three more starts he if needed, yeah, if he, needed right. he would pitch Thursday Tuesday and then Sunday with Sunday being the last day of the regular season so or, if you need him or Tuesday <laughs> or Tuesday yeah. if you need him yeah. he could pitch Sunday if not right. he gets an extra day and could pitch Tuesday so that's the the reason that Hamels was slid up yeah. from Friday to Thursday. So the A's will see him on Thursday afternoon. Well, an off days allow teams to do that. The Rangers off yesterday, as were the A's flying in. The Rangers were starting their final road trip. But yeah, all that does line up, and it could work out to benefit because. I mean, clubs are done again. The Yankees and the Blue Jays in Houston. And all those clubs, if they have the opportunity, of course, all of them want to get in. The Royal is pretty much a lock as they have a huge lead in the Central Division. Now the Rangers next week will host Detroit Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then host the Angels yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So they have a couple of huge yeah. series coming up. And that's why the three games next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday against the A's in Anaheim will be huge no for question. for the Angels and the A's and Bob Melvin trying to do that starting right now these three and then three against the Giants three against the uh, the Angels and really the last three against the Mariners will be a whole home weekend yeah. series you know because yeah. both teams out of it still play hard still play to try to win every game possible and the A's announced that Sonny Gray is going to pitch on Friday against the Giants, and I think Chris Bassett may pitch back in there. It's good He's, Thursday, which is good. Yeah. So Bassett Thursday, Gray Friday. And Jesse Hunt on his throwing program said that uh, he's had three, which have been good, and yeah, extend the the distance on those. And I hope that Jesse Hahn, one of the disabled starting pitchers, Chris Bassett talking to. The catcher Stephen Vogt. That's it's missed some time, but uh, get a chance to start on Thursday. It's good to see. Jesse Chavez is back with the ball club. He flew out of Chicago after fracturing the rib and we got hit in Texas and might have contributed to that. Outside and now full count. Is one for three. Singleton scored in the sixth. The Rangers tonight have one home run. That was Moreland's two run shot, but their execution has been good. They have three sacrifice flies, they have two sacrifice bunts. They've only struck out three times. Three two pitches a bullet under the glove of Valencia and headed for the left field corner. So Andrus with a one out double. 
So two hits tonight for Elvis Andrus. Yeah, nine pitch at bat. He eventually got a pitch that he could drive hard, and he did. And Valencia trying to take it to the side. And once it got past him, an easy double for Andrus. Now batting number 12, Rubenet Odor. Kurt Young going to go visit with his left handed pitcher and. See how he's going to face Odor actually give a little time. For the right hander Alvarez to get loose in the bullpen. Alvarez who was up last inning just jumped up again so he would not need a lot. Well this time of the year Kipe, and it's a good month of September and. Welcome Ryan Christensen, manager of the Midland Ball Club, and they are the Texas League champions. And he's an outfielder with the Athletics, a very good outfielder. Ryan Christensen, now manager in the minor league system of the Athletics. And every time I see him, I think about the right field corner when he had an inside the park home run as a member of the Athletics. Some things you just never forget. Did you remind him of that when you saw him? Of course him? I did. I have a I feeling always, that you yeah, did. Yeah, no, he remembers it. I mean, you never forget an inside the park home run. Trying for third, and Odor gets there, and well, that's pretty good base running. Or Anders, excuse me, Odor is the hitter. But he read it well and took off. Yeah, you got to have the, the secondary leads, and when it happens, you expect the ball hits in the dirt. You take off, got the shoulder of Blair, no throw. And it's a wild pitch, and got the right shoulder at least to block it, but still the runner able to advance. So infield in 102 Odor. Big swing. So another sacrifice fly opportunity. Yeah. Just said three for the Rangers. Roll and file. Does not get cheated, Rogan no. Odor, 21 years old. Plays with a certain amount of flair that has not no always way. made other teams <laughs> that excited. He's had some run ins. My guess, I don't think he's going to change. No. Bounced into right field, and that's a base hit. Andrus trots in to score. So the base running by Andrus certainly helped with the infield in and makes Odor his job just a little bit easier, and he rolled it into right field for an RBI single. And this is a one two pitch also, and that makes it that much more special when you're able to put the ball in play. With two strikes, he did. Got a pretty good pitch to hit, and found the hole. And Andrews getting the third base makes it easy for him to score. So Colomb leaves and RJ Alvarez comes in when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and repair experts. Your attention please.
automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Now the Rangers have added a run here in the top of the eighth. It's now seven to five. Odor is at first with one out. The new pitcher is RJ Alvarez. So he'll face Jimenez, the ninth place hitter for Texas. So Cologne goes an inning and a third, gives up a couple hits, one run so far. And Alvarez appearing in his 19th game. It's been a tough year for RJ Alvarez. Jimenez a strikeout, a walk, and a sacrifice, and he has scored. Huh? Odor has five steals on the air. He's been thrown out six times. Dyson joins Deepman. Good fastball there from Alvarez called the strike. If Mikey Fallon's clubhouse is as crowded as Steve Vucinich's, then there's a lot of people over there. Yeah, Vuce is maxed <laughs> out, man. And if anybody can handle it, he can. Oh, yeah. There is a limit. There's a real estate limit. To like if Ryan, he's, Ryan he's Christensen. <laughs> hey, Rhino, sorry, buddy. Don't even have one, a locker for you to share. It's so crowded. But. Well, what's the player number at for the A's right now? 37. 37. That's six on the DL. And you got the DL guys who are still Four here. Three. Coaches. He had a couple extra coaches. You got a. It's a full house. Yeah, the hardest part is to provide the food for all those guys. That's a lot of food. It's a big cow. <laughs> Runner goes, <laughs> and it's not a real big lunchroom <laughs> in the A's clubhouse. But this is probably the most, huh? Oh, yeah. I think so. It's most I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> Beyond the bullpen. Where's the heater down there? Scotty's got a seat though, so he's all set. Two pitch and it's hit toward right. Reddick headed for the corner. That could be trouble, and it is. It bounces fair and then up into the seats. It's going to be a ground rule double. So now it's second and third one out. Well, another two strike hit. That's. That's hard there because Jimenez did a good job hitting down the right field. It would not slice, just stayed straight and pretty hittable fastball outside corner. It went it perfectly. And you figure this ball is going to slice. It started and then it was straight down. Would have tried hard in the seats and at least a ground rule double. Otherwise, Odor probably would have scored. Good fastball location though, made it pretty hittable for right handed hitter. So 11 hits now for the Rangers. They about hit the A's 11 to 6. Infield in, here's the Shields. The Shields has had a good night. He walked and scored in the first, hit a fly ball to the right in the third, singled and scored in the fifth, and had a sacrifice fly in the sixth. So he's been a big part of the offense. Tonight's game. Overall at 257. Popped up shallow center. Lori hustling out, still going out, and Lori caught it. And the tag. Here comes Odor, and he will score. Rodeto Dur tagged up and he got a good jump off third. And there's just not a lot you can do. Laurie made a very nice play, but Odur has great speed. 
you know what at a, at a play like that you almost need to have the center fielder who's coming in catch the ball flip it to him or somebody who is coming in from the outfield flip it to them let them make the and throw because it's very hard for an infielder with his back to the infield to make the play turn around and make a strong enough throw to get the runner kind of handoff it's football you just hand sure. it off and throw it that's really the only way you're going to get anybody and Odor I mean it's it shallow enough that it couldn't score on what he assumed was going to be a base hit so he tagged him. another sack fly Fourth of the night. That'd be the most shallow sack fly in the game. Well, now Venditti starts to throw. So both those runs are charged to Daniel Coulomb. Pomeranz gave up one run. It was an unearned run. Chu is 0 for 2. He's got a sacrifice fly. So 95 miles an hour from Alvarez, although with Alvarez, velocity's not the issue. He's got plenty of it. Shallow left field. Smolinski will take care of it. Side retired. Two runs on three hits for the Rangers, so they add on. It's now eight to five as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. This game summary is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. 8, 11, and 2 for Texas, 5, 6, and 2 for the A's. And neither pitcher pitched real deep into the game, and both had a lot of work. We were in and out of trouble. Mitch Moreland, three hits and a two run homer. And four sacrifice flies for the Rangers tonight. And they lead it 8 to 5. Bottom of the eighth inning. And they bring in the left hander, Jake Diekman. Deekman came over with Cole Hamels in that big trade. Two and one of 4.20 ERA are his combined numbers. His ERA with the Rangers is 2.41. He's got a little bit of a funky delivery and he can be tough to hit. Well, he throws hard, and I think that's kind of rare. Lefties don't typically throw as hard as righties, but I guess Chris Sale would probably eject. To that statement, but it still is, you know, lefties have that little movement. 
Diekman will cross fire and throws hard the outside part of the plate. And he, his build and actually his delivery a little bit. It looks a little bit like Chris Sale. Exactly. Many years the A's that start the regular season facing Felix Fernandez. Next year they'll probably face Chris Sale. Yep. As White Sox will be here at the Coliseum opener of the 2016 season. And that was pitch right there that <laughs> that's not fair. No. Especially when you, and he did so well, he's going to face one batter and he's going to leap. But he's throwing from second base and outside corner, perfect for throwing five pitches. Have a good night. So back to the bullpen as Diekman faces one hitter, he does his job. So we'll be back. For next season, the A's offer a variety of full and partial season plans that qualify for great benefits, including half price parking, flexible ticket exchange program, and more. For more information, you can call 510 68 Glaze or visit athletics.com slash 2016. There are boys right there. So Coco is going to pinch hit for Smolenski, and he's going to face the new right-handed reliever, Sam Dyson, another trade acquisition. Dyson came over from the Marlins in July, so the Rangers added Dyson and Diekman, a couple of pretty good relievers. So here's Coco. One out and nobody aboard here in the bottom of the eighth. The first pitch is a little bit low. The numbers for Coco this year. Is not a lot of playing time. Since his 38th game is a 117th at bat. Not a lot of playing time due to injuries. Done a good job. Pinch hitting. But probably not what he wants to do. Nor the ace. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's. They'd like to see him play in 140 to 150 games and getting on base, hitting home runs, stealing bases, doing all the things that he has done throughout his A's career. Oh, look at that. That's it. 705. 
Opening night. It's the YP right there. Then. April 4th. Might be a giveaway. <laughs> hey, that's my birthday. Be a little I bit jump to the game. Be a little steady with that photo. So Coco strikes out. So two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. All right, get to two strikes and now batting shortstop number ten straight down. Marcus That's what makes pinch hitting so tough because you're facing guys throwing pretty well, especially with a good pitch that goes down so quickly it looks like a strike ends up out of the strike zone. So Simeon hits against Dyson in first strike. Ninety seven miles an hour. Easy. Wow. Looks like we see Pat Venditti. Simeon tonight has tripled in a run. That was in the second, and then he struck out in the third. And hit a fly ball to center field in the sixth. His last hit was the fifth inning. And it was that leadoff single by Lori. Crowd tonight over 16,000 in the building. So three and one to Simeon. That one at 98 miles an hour. That doesn't does not look like he's throwing that hard. No, and for the ball to have the kind of movement that it has on the ball, the, the, throwing that hard with the movement, you're normally 98 is going to be a four seam and straight. That's not. Yeah, he's got a lot of movement, but it it's just not a high high effort delivery. Not a maximum effort. He just kind of lets it go and it comes out at 96, 97 miles an hour. And there's a shot left center and a hit. Well, Marcus Simeon turns down or turns around that high velocity pitch and he's two for four. Proof that no matter how hard you throw, you straighten the ball out, and hitters can turn on it. Good swing by Marcus Simeon. They also a shot to straightaway center on the fastball from Perez. Or the triple back in the second inning. So it looks like Stephen Vogt is going to hit for Carson Blair. And he's either going to catch or we're going to see Brent Anderson. As Fegley's done, Blair would be out. Stephen Vogt, nice round of applause. So both fans everywhere. Good to see him back in there in front of the home fans. Listen, he last left in a very, very strange way because the A's, I mean, he didn't play that Sunday. And then the A's played three more and went on the road. So this is his first game that the fans have seen him That's here right. at the Coliseum since that horrible shot. And strike on the outside court. Mr. the bullpen, but that is, it looks like he's probably going to be coming in. So, both Simeon got a good read and he takes off. So, it'll be a wild pitch and a runner in scoring position. Well, the secondary lead again, and very good base running by Simeon. And you get the Get the lead. As soon as the ball hits the ground, you're gone. And it is very rare that a catcher is going to retrieve the ball quickly enough to throw you out, especially the speed of Simeon. And that 
pitch. He took a little off, so we've seen nothing but 96, 97 miles an hour. That one was at 87, and Volt just got a piece of it. Volt got a start in Houston. He was the designated hitter. Trying to knock in a run here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And that's going to do it. So pretty good stuff from one Sam Dyson. He strikes out three, gives up a hit, and we're through eight. Eight five, Rangers. Colby Lewis and Felix Dubron is your pitching matchup. Our coverage begins at 6.30 p.m. with A's pregame live. And then you get complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNCalifornia.com. The home of A's baseball is CSN. Pat Venditti comes in for the athletics. He is pitcher number five. It's been Nolan, Pomeranz, Coulomb, Alvarez and now Venditti. So he's got the heart of the order. Beltre, Prince Fielder, and then Max Venable. Will Venable, excuse me. Beltre off the end of the bat. Coco just in the game broke back. Now he comes. Hustling in but cannot make the play and Beltre is going to go to second and stop. So Coco went back and then he had to come hustling in. He just could not get to it. So it's a double. So Coco in the game now in left field. It was a big swing. You see Coco break back and then once he came in, the ball just off the end of the bat. Broken bat did not really and travel man, that much and Beltre running all Prince the way. And fielder. Able to get to second base. So career double number 555. He's now 27th on the all time list for doubles. And we think he's heading to the Hall of Fame. That's right. Also, new catcher Brian Anderson takes over. So, Anderson, the catcher, Crispin left are your two defensive changes for the A's. Sweeping slider and Fielder missed it. So 12 hits now for Texas. 
Again, that slider. Could not come up with it. That's a big strikeout, especially with the leadoff double. And Benetti with a sweeping slider just kept running and running. And Prince Fielder flailing at it, could not make contact. And had he made contact, it would not have been pulled as he was attempting to do. So if you're Will Venable and you see that, should you just be thinking about one pitch? Uh, yeah. And then here comes the fastball. <laughs> of course. That's what happens. Yeah. Then you get it. There it was, and he rolls it foul, so it's 0 and 2. So Beltray, the runner, at second with one out. Tollison, the closer, is warming up down in the Rangers bullpen. And at this point, it is a save situation. And Venable chased it. And that's the second strikeout for Venditti. Two away here in the ninth. Gonna walk, babe. Is babe up again? <laughs> Babe's up again. He's gonna bat left, and Venditti's gonna pitch left. Mitch and Moreland's home run in the sixth inning. Off Nolan. In fact, it was the last hitter that Nolan faced. Slider away. Every time you see the, the big man Moreland coming up, you have to think about Chris Davis and the Orioles and what he did with one hand, yep. flat footed, and a walk off on a slider about ankle high. A little bit inside, two and all. So Moreland with that home run in the sixth inning now has 23 on the year. That ties a career high. He hit 23 in 2013 as well. But definitely a career high in RBIs as he now has 81. Just a touch low, three and one. Not a bad pitch. And dead, dead he's staying down low. This pitch up high. And I don't think really it matters to Moreland when he sees the athletics of the Oakland on the front of the uniform and where he plays out in Oakland or in Arlington. You hold up, yes. So the three-one pitch, a little inside, and Moreland has a walk. Then Deddy just want to be able to turn around and throw right-handed. Sure. Which he will to Elvis Andrews. See how much of the bat goes through the hitting zone. He's getting out of the way of the baseball, but it's not a matter of that. That's a swing. I don't know. I think it is too. And not know what Andy Fletcher was looking at at third base, but he didn't make contact. He might have hit a home run as strong as he is. Knowing <laughs> that where he's trying to get out of the way of being hit. And oh, must be something in center field. That was seen by Jerry Mill. That's pretty good eyes by Jerry. A baseball, where did that come from? Actually, I don't know. I think it was a carton of something. Oh, yeah? It was not a baseball. He's got better eyes than I do. I was going to say, if that was baseball, then I think about it. That is a bad throw of Mr. Tollison. <laughs> Otherwise, somebody <laughs> flailed it from one of the suites <laughs> way, way out of center field. Sweeping slider and Anders takes it for a ball one and oh. Hayes will have the top of their order in the ninth inning and it'll be against Tallis in the closer. And now it's two and oh. And it looks like Anders is up there not going to swing at the slider expecting to get the slider. Two on two out here in the ninth. That's high, and it's three and zero. Oh. Mm 
than Diddy. Gets a strike there, so Andrus almost looks like you're right. He's taken, but although I don't think he'll be taken here, no. not with an RBI out there. And he missed up and away. So back to back walks, and now the bases are loaded. So Elvis Andrus has been on base four times tonight. Now batting. Number 12, and here's Odor. Odor. Odor has got a couple of fly ball outs. He's reached on an air and he has an RBI single. In there for a strike. Astros lost to the Angels tonight, four to three. So that score on the mind of the Texas Rangers. So if they were to win the game, can make their lead two in the West. And they are headed to Houston after this series. Two pitch cued up the third baseline. It stays foul. Arnold Leon starts to throw. So all and two to Odor. Beltre at third, Moreland at second, Anders at first. Checked his swing and he did not go. You know, they're playing him to pull and with the slider, if he gets out in front, the hanger might pull it, but the problem this pitch running away, the big leg kick and <laughs> his body swung, but the bat didn't. But the problem is going to left field with this pitch if he does swing and make contact because it probably would be swinging late. I don't know that he'd roll over on the pitch, but and then he's needs to throw a strike. So two and two, base is loaded. A reach for popped up over near the A's dugout into the seats. Nice play. So the fans stuck around and it was worth it. Although he has other baseballs there. Wow, bare hand. That's pretty good. Where do you think he got those other two? I don't know, but he could do a juggling act with all three pretty good. I bet he can juggle. Those look like game balls, too. Yeah. Hmm. Mystery. Swing and a miss. So Dewar swung over top a good sinker. Side retired and the Rangers leave them loaded. Closer Tollison coming in. Burns Cantalari and hopefully more. And the Rangers lead eight to five as we go to the bottom of the ninth.
products and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. And that's how the players, I say players because of this one triple, Smolinski to left center. A triple that would score a run. And how about Marcus Simonese, 39th triple, Nick at 40th triple of the season for the Athletics. First back to back triple since 1992. And that one by Marcus Simeon. They tie the record for the Athletics set 1968. 40 triples. And they still have 11 games remaining to get to the 41st. But uh, players of the game, Smolinski and Simeon, back to back triples. So what a game back to back triples by the ace four sack flies by the Rangers. Mm -hmm. That's been the difference in the game. So Sean Tollison comes in 32 out of 34. His first year as the closer. He's done a nice job. 2.71 ERA more strikeouts than innings pitched. So. He is the guy in the ninth. Drew Stubbs. Comes in the game. Very good defensive center fielder. Burns, Canna, and Laurie here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And a strike in the inside corner. Burns one for four. He singled in the very first inning. Be nice to see Billy Burns finish with the batting average over 300. He's at 297. Lays off the high fastball. Whatever he ends up hitting, it's been yep. quite a year for Billy yeah. Burns, and you know, was he on anybody's radar to be the A's everyday center fielder this year? Probably yeah. not. And in reality, he's going to get better and better for him to have the kind of season he did this year, and to remember the way he played in Minas uh, Minute Maid Park last year in Houston. Says a lot about how far he has come this year. So one out here in the night. Well, so the month of Vincent. September being well, it's an important month, but for a lot of players who never played in September, it's a huge month. You can Mod learn a lot in September. Yeah, minor league seasons five months. And September call ups, of course, the additional month for those who are called up. Mark Canna experiencing his first time really playing extensively in September and really the entire season. Well, he has. I mean, I think you could probably argue that Canna's impression has been just as impressive as Billy Burns. Yeah, exactly. I mean, here you're talking about a, a possible legitimate run producer. Mm -hmm. There's a base hit left center field and that'll shoot all the way to the wall on the hard ground. So Canna has his second hit. And if he's tired, he's not showing it. The way he is swinging a bat tonight. It is September the 22nd and he jumped on a fastball from Perez to drive in a run with two outs in the second inning and this time against the hard throwing Tollison. It's a double and tell you the way he attacks the ball. He hits the ground. It flies and it got through two speedy outfielders and left in center. Edible and Stubbs, so a one out double. A Mark Camp. So he's need another base runner. Get the tying run to the plate. Here is Laurie, who is one for four. Right there with a fastball first strike and 93 miles an hour. Laurie's hit came in the fifth inning. It was a single and he scored in that inning. He's post game live coming up. We'll be back with you tomorrow for game two of this series. Felix Dubron, Colby Lewis. Colby Lewis will be looking for his 17th win of the year.
curve and a good one right over top. And then Thursday's game will be televised. It'll be simulcast. And then a big weekend. Tollison pitching from the first base side of the rubber. Grabs it, checks the runner, and spins to throw to first. So uh, Tollison heads up. He looked right to second to see if Canna was staying at second, and he was. Two outs for Valencia. Final hope for the A's. Trying to get aboard. And you look at Sean Tollison, how far he has come, and with the Rangers in need of trying to find a closer. and. They went through a few and they have settled with Sean Tollison and he has done a very good job. I remember he pitched out of the bullpen last year and he was a yeah. decent reliever for the Rangers. Grabbed the closer's job this year. Valencia takes a fastball outside. Valencia, a ground out, a walk, reached on an air, and another walk. So he's been on base three times, does not have a hit. Missed again. Fastball away at 93 miles an hour. Billy Butler would be next. Maybe he could duplicate the three run home run he hit in Chicago. Big opposite field three run home run to give the A's the win in Chicago last Thursday. Sitting on a 2 0 count as Valencia and taken all the way, and it's a strike. Defense fairly straight away. Odor inch towards second base. Outfield is pretty straight away. So we'll have a meeting at the mound. Uh, multiple signs, you know, running to second base and probably need to get it clarified. And we do not want Billy Butler to come up. There's a potential tying run. Well, I hope they got it cleared up. And it looks like they do. Outside again. Missing with that fastball, and now it's three and one. There's Butler hoping to get a chance to hit here in the night. And now it's three and two. I expect the same pitch. Fastball, then probably just aim for down the middle. I don't think any pitcher in this part of the game wants to see the potential tying run come to the plate. He doesn't. Here it is. 3 2 pitch. Popped up. Moreland coming over, and Moreland cannot quite get to it. So that fan. Leaned against that gate right there, and the gate popped open. And he thought, found himself in play. I thought maybe he opened the gate and said, Come on in. <laughs> he didn't mean to. No. <laughs> he just, all of a sudden, wow. he was in play. I put a better lock on that door. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> So we'll do 3 2 again. Yeah. 
and it's a base hit left field. And they're going to wave Canna home, and he will come in to score. So the A's will get the time run to the plate here in the night. They always seem to do it. And smart hitting by Danny Valencia, figuring that Tolleson is going to challenge him with a fastball. Didn't want to try to trick him. There's a fastball, and right down the middle. And Valencia with the hit tonight, walked a couple of times. And his first hit, but a big one. His time run does come to the plate in Billy Buck. And with that, Sean Doolin was starts to get loose in the pen. And in Houston, Texas, you got two teams that are cheering for the A's right now. Big time. Or they're in bed. <laughs> Here's Butler. Couple of at bats against Tolleson. Couple of strikeouts. First pitch. And Billy Butler had the I'm going to tie this game That's up it. swing, and he had a good rip. First pitch was there, and he was ripping it trying. Of course, he had a, a long one to center field back in the second inning that I think he thought he got a lot more than what it turned out. Right now, just take a base hit, take a extra bases, give Josh Reddick a chance. Just keep it going. Valencia can go and he's going to go to second. Pitches outside. Valencia will get to second. So eight to six. Nine hits now for the A's. The Rangers have 12. And just take a base hit. They will not allow the indifference to occur if Billy Butler gets a base hit. Breaking ball. So now the count. Two and one to Billy Butler. Butler on the year has 13 home runs and 62 RBIs. Well, missed with the curveball. Comes back with a fastball. Load up, let it go. And if he throws the curveball, don't swing. And it got a fastball to hit and it had a good swing and now it's one and two. Sometimes the the look on a hitter's yeah. face tells you the story and he liked this one to hit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> please please throw that. He again. just said oh my gosh. <laughs> so with that we're going to talk about it. Decide how they're going to approach Billy Butler with two and two. And you know my theory: you throw a curveball, and miss. Guess what? You're going to get three and two. Yeah. So this might be the all-important pitch, two and two, and maybe just a slightly late swing base hit to right field. Fastball high at 93 miles an hour. So full count. Reddick is the on-deck hitter. Spring training in Mesa, Arizona, right there at the Coliseum in the dugout. Butler chops one toward the shortstop, Andrus, who's got it, flips it across, and that's the ball game. So the A's get a run on a couple of hits in the bottom of the ninth inning, but they come up short in game one of this series. Three hours and 38 minutes tonight. It took that was the time of game and it was 16,524 as your attendance final score in game one the Rangers eight and the Athletics six you've been watching Ace baseball on CSN California it's part of the NBC sports group don't go away Ace post game live with Brody Brazil and Bip Roberts starts right now